And yes, I have checked my emails. Hello everyone and welcome to the 38th episode of the Blind Pinterest Challenge, the series where I recreate crafts and DIY projects from Pinterest without any instructions. Because at this point, now that I've started this series, I need to get to like the 100th episode. It's become an addiction. It's become an obsession. She's mine! I will get to that 100th episode. What am I up to now? 38. So only another... I, well, I can't do math. 52? Does that make 152? Add that. No. 62. It'll be 62. Well done. Can I even do another 62 episodes? I think by the time I get to 100, Pinterest will have run out of crafts for me to actually recreate. Okay, so I think the first craft I want to try in today's episode is this melty disco ball. And apparently they're selling it on Etsy, but I think I can make this. I really do. I have a feeling that either when I do make this, and I do think I can make this, mine will either look really good or really bad. I don't think there's going to be an in-between with this one, but I think that's so fun. It's almost kind of too tacky, but in my eyes, it's just tacky enough. I absolutely love it. Love it a bit. Definitely want to hang that in my room. Next up, I'm going to try this little acorn marble necklace piece, which I think is super cute and super adorable. I just need to find some quite nice marbles atop of an acorn, I suppose, or maybe it's like a synthetic acorn, or I might be able to find a mold of some kind, and then just glue it together, I think. I think that's all they've done. I feel like that's the kind of thing you would make and give to your friend when you were younger or something. But I'm into it. I'm going to make myself one because I don't have any friends that'll make me one. <laughs> Next up, I think I'm going to try and make this jigsaw piece ball, which I don't think is a very practical idea. And I don't think it's a very good idea, especially if they've actually used jigsaw puzzle pieces, which I think they have. It might be something that you can put on display and like show people your jigsaw ball, but I don't think you're going to want to actually put anything in it because I think it'll break. But I'm going to try it so you don't have to. And I I think my final craft for today is going to be this kind of broomstick made out of plants and flowers. I don't understand kind of what the point of it is. I don't know whether it's just for decoration or whether it has another purpose, but I think it looks really cool. I think especially if you just kind of propped it up in like a nice little cottage. I think this is the kind of thing that would look very nice in a country cottage kind of setting, just placed in a corner somewhere gathering dust. I think that would look very, very nice. And a couple of cobwebs on it and stuff. And I don't think you can really go wrong with this. And by the looks of things, I can kind of pick what kind of colour scheme I want to go for, so that's nice. Obviously, I'll probably go for all colours. I think it'll be expensive, though. I think this will be very expensive. But again, I'll waste my money so you don't have to. <laughs> I'm finally back in my brand new studio. So if anyone thought it was trickery that I record one part of the blind Pinterest challenge and then record another one, this is proof that it does actually happen that way. I recorded the first part of this video. I can't even remember how long ago. It was about like four weeks ago or something. But now we're in a new studio. How fun. And anyway, I thought we'd start off with one that I think is going to be a bit of a shitter. And I don't think it's going to work. I'm not confident in it at all. And it's going to be the jigsaw puzzle ball. So for this, I just started with a regular plastic ball that I already had in the studio. And I also bought this fun puzzle, which was very colourful. And I thought it would look really nice as a ball. I then wrapped the ball in some plastic plastic sheet just to act as a barrier between the jigsaw puzzle pieces and the actual ball. I then applied a very thick layer of PVA glue to the plastic sheet and tried my best to add these puzzle pieces to the plastic sheet without the plastic sheet and the ball and the puzzle pieces slipping absolutely everywhere. And then once that was done, I decided to drizzle some more PVA glue over the top of these puzzle pieces and add some more puzzle pieces on top of the puzzle pieces just to act as a bit of support because it was feeling very, very fragile. And I think that's all I kind of wanted to do with it. I was just hoping for the best, hoping that it was going to turn itself into a ball and just left it to uh, fully dry. So I've got it here and I am worried that it's not going to maintain the shape of the actual ball. And also I'm worried that I'm not going to be able to get it off the plastic. They're my two biggest concerns and I think w at least one of them is going to become a reality to us. Let's have a look. Oh, I think I've got the ball shape. I do have the ball shape. Okay, now I just need to get the plastic off. Oh, I've ripped it. That's so fragile, it's unreal. Oh, this isn't gonna work, I know it's not. We'll just keep teasing it and hope for the best. Oh wait, I think I might have done it. No way. Have I actually done this? Okay, so we have expectation. And reality, I've actually done it. I don't understand how they did this without getting glue everywhere. There's lots of glue on show with mine. I feel like they didn't do it the way I've done it. In fact, I know they've done it. Not the way I've done it. Oh, look at that bit. Just, I'll just peel that bit off. But there we go. 
a jigsaw puzzle ball. I've also realised I've stuck kind of the coloured bits the wrong way. It should have been on the inside, but I, I'm shocked it's actually worked. It's kind of worked. It's not as nice as theirs. I feel like they might have possibly super glued every single individual piece of jigsaw puzzle to one another around a ball and then connected it that way rather than using PVA because obviously you can just see all the PVA. But it's so incredibly fragile. Like if I played with this for too long, it's all going to fall apart. And in fact, I think even if I just left it like that over over time, I think gravity would take over and it would just collapse. But let's see how much this cost. I think I spent a lot of money because I think I bought a fancy jigsaw puzzle for some stupid reason. So this cost me £16.99 because I didn't shop around for a jigsaw puzzle. But also, I've got a lot more jigsaw puzzles left over so I could make multiple balls if I wanted to. I don't want to. I don't think it's a very good idea, but I'm glad I've got the option. <laughs> okay, so next up, I thought I would attempt to make the little acorn marble necklace pieces. And I haven't done it yet, and I'm thinking it'll be pretty straightforward. So, I've bought these fake acorns. I'm not entirely sure in the original pin if they used real acorns or whether they used fake ones, but I'm just gonna be using fake ones for this. And I've got some fancy marbles here. How nice are them? I used to collect marbles when I was younger, cause I was really sad. But look how nice their marbles are. I would have loved to have had these in my collection. Like, they're absolutely beautiful. I used to also collect shells. <laughs> and I used to also collect power balls. <laughs> and I used to weirdly also collect, you know them plastic things that had liquid in the bottom and you turn them upside down and they did like a drain through. Kind of like an hourglass, but they did different things. I had a huge collection of them as well for some reason. <laughs> Don't judge us, okay? I like keeping things. Right, I wanna see if I can get that bit out. Oh, that was really easy. So I think I want to drill a hole through that first. Two holes on either side of this. And then I'm gonna take a bit of string, thread it, and just wet it and thread it in one side and up through the other. This is a little trickier than I thought. In fact, I'm gonna use one of my little tricks. I think I might have shown you this life hack before, but if you're struggling to thread like a bit of thread or string through a hole, just take a bit of masking tape or just any other tape, wrap it around the end that you want and then just kind of twirl it and narrow it on the end like that. And then you've got like a nice point and you can just thread it through. And voila! Easy peasy. Don't say I never teach you anything. I've taught you a valuable little life hack today. And then you can easily just pull the tear off the end. I'll just chop it off actually. And then I think all I want to do is hot glue a marble into it. If I was wanting this to be like super strong, I would super glue the marble into here. But I don't have any super glue. I do have different kinds of glue, but it'll take a while for it to set and I don't have the time. So it's just going to be hot glue to the rescue. And then just stick our little marble in. Okay, so we have expectation. And reality, absolutely so easy to make these, ridiculously easy to make these. And I think they're actually quite cute. Obviously, I've used just some brown string because I didn't have any coloured string and I forgot to buy some. I think that's absolutely adorable. And like, I suppose if you're like kids and stuff, you could make them for like your friends, couldn't you? But yeah, it's a very fun little craft idea and I think I've done a very good job. So I spent about £14 on materials, but in reality, to make one of these, I think it probably cost me about a pound, if that. So a very cheap little craft idea. and. I think it's absolutely adorable. Okay, so moving on to the floral broomstick ornament thing that I'm not entirely sure what it's supposed to be. And to start with this, I scavenged a gorgeous branch from the trees outside and brought it into the studio and cut it down a little bit because it was slightly too long. I then sanded a bunch of the shite off this branch because it was covered in moss and bird crap and all sorts. And then finally gave it a generous coat of varnish. And I've got my finished little branch here and now it's just time to add some flowers to it. And I've bought an absolute ton of different kinds of like flowers and feathers and hope I have enough. And I already know this one's going to be an expensive one because artificial flowers are ridiculously expensive. I don't know why they cost so much. And also, I always get carried away and buy too much. Ooh, these are nice. <gasps> these are well fancy. Ooh, oh, they're beautiful. Look at these things. Aren't these nice? Nice little whispery bits. I think this is going to look quite good, actually. I did try and keep it all in the same colour theme. So I've gone for kind of like blues and oranges and greens. And then I also had some leftover flowers. So they might go in, they might not go. 
penguin. And then I've got some peacock feathers as well. Oh, look at this. This is elegant, isn't it? Are they real? I thought these were fake, but I think they're real feathers. And my idea for this is to just kind of cable tie them on rather than pissing around with hot glue and see where we go from there. And just really build it up, I suppose. I was going to hot glue them on, but hot glue's pretty shit for securing flowers to wood and stuff. I know that from past experiences. There's a ladder down there. You won't be able to see it. It's just off camera. And I did one of them in the blind Pinterest challenge. And all the flowers are just falling off it. So I would rather cable tie them on. Also, the light in this video might be a little bit strange because I bought a new computer recently. I was desperate for a new computer and it's right next to us. You'll be able to see it a little bit on this camera and it is absolutely ginormous. I didn't realize how big it was until I opened it up and I was like, why? Why have I bought one with a screen that big? I don't need it to be that big. But it's basically blocking all my lights out. But I was absolutely desperate for a new computer. I had my eyes on this one as well and I was waiting for it to go in the sale and I must have got about six hundred pound off it. It still cost us a fortune, but I put it on my credit card, so I'll let future Ed deal with that. But I've had it for a few weeks now, and I swear down, editing videos, it's just like butter. It is so smooth. I didn't realize how much my other computer was struggling, editing and keeping up with what I was doing until I got that one. So although it cost a lot of money, it's been worthwhile. The only thing I don't like about it is how stupidly big the screen is. And also the speakers are really shit on it. I've had to buy an extra pair of speakers. The sound quality is shocking. But the processing and how quiet it is, like listen, you can't hear it. My other computer, it sounded like there was a car engine in the same room as us. We constantly struggle. I feel like a proper florist doing this, you know. I think it's actually gonna look really cool. I suppose the good thing about something like this is you can really just make it your own. You can do whatever the hell you want with it. I am a little bit concerned that I'm not gonna have enough flowers, surprisingly, because looking at the original pin, theirs is absolutely packed. I'm also wondering, you know, on their original pin, whether they've used real flowers. I have a feeling they might have. I think it might be some sort of like, I don't know, flower exhibition or wedding thing or something but I don't know. I'm using fake ones and mine will last longer. It's a bit of a weird one as well. I've got like the entire week off work this week and I'm like catching up on like loads of stuff. And anyway I've tried to make a habit of when I'm not at work I don't check my work emails and I just kind of leave it as it is and you know nothing's like super important and I can get back to it when I get back to work. And anyway I very rarely get emails and it just so happens that the week I'm off work and yes I have checked my emails. The week I'm off work, I have so many emails. I'm just like, oh, why? Why? So when I get back, I'm gonna have to, I'm not doing it while I'm off. I am not doing it while I'm off. I absolutely refuse. But when I get back, I'm gonna have to go through everything and sort it all out. It's just like, ugh, I don't get paid enough. You know what? I'm not just saying this. I think this craft that I'm making is gonna look like shit hot. I'm surprised at like how full it's getting. I don't know whether to add any of these peacock feathers. I don't actually even know where I'm gonna put them now. I think I should just stick a few in just at the front there. That might, oh, actually, yeah, that might look nice. Yeah, screw it. I will put them on. It didn't take much convincing to this. I put them on and I was just like, yep, yep, I will have it, yep. I'm wondering, shall I bother? Yeah, I will. Again, I don't really need to convince myself. I'm just like, yep, yep. Don't need to ask us twice. I will. I will have that. Thank you very much. Right, I'm not done yet though because this bit needs tied, you know, with some twine. Okay, I think I'm finally done with that. So we have expectation. And reality. I think I've done quite a cool job of that. I think it looks quite nice. What do you think? I think it looks alright. Up close, you can kind of see all the cable ties and everything. But I don't know, I think that's really nice. That's probably like fancy, isn't it? And it's well made too. Like I could smack someone with this. This could be a weapon. A very, very glamorous, fancy weapon. And I don't think it would fall apart. Like it's strong. Look at that, I can shake it and nothing's falling off it. It makes a change. But how much did this cost us? I have a feeling I basically went bankrupt making this. Okay, so surprisingly, although it cost me a lot of money, it didn't cost me as much as I thought it was going to. And this thing cost me £54.65. So it's, it's still, it's it's a lot. It's it's a hell of a lot. But it's because artificials are expensive, like I said, they're an absolute fortune. I'm not mad at it. I've spent more on things I've hated. So to spend this much on something that I actually quite enjoy, 
I don't, I don't care. I don't mind. <laughs> I'm moving on to the final craft of today's episode, and it's going to be the Melty Disco Ball. So I started off with a regular polystyrene ball, and then just sprayed three dollops of expandable foam onto one side of this to kind of hopefully resemble the drips. And once it had set and I'd added a few extra layers, it was looking a little bit like this. And it doesn't really look melty yet. It doesn't look like drips. So I thought the best thing to do would be to carve it down with a knife, just to try and resemble more of like a drippy kind of more to it. And I think I was kind of happy with the shape of this. It's going to be covered in mosaic tiles anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much. My next step for this was to cover the foam drip bits with some plaster bandages. And this is a process I've used for years and years and years. I absolutely love plaster bandages. They have a fantastic application, not just for making pots when you've broken your leg, but for sculptural purposes. They're absolutely great. And I was basically using these just to kind of smooth down the surface of this foam and also to try and add a little bit more detail and more sculptural detail and give it more of a drippy kind of feel to it. And once I was kind of happy with that, I just put it to one side to let it dry. A couple of days later, I decided to paint the entire thing in a gloss white paint just to give it a very smooth finish ready for when I'm sticking these tiles on. Because if it was a rough finish, it would struggle to stick on, things are more likely to fall off. So I'd much prefer to have kind of like a plasticky coat to this entire thing. And before I started adding mosaic tiles to this, I thought the best thing to do would be to attach a hook on the top of it ready to be able to be suspended. So I bought this metal loop thing and just added some super glue on the bottom of it. I then stuck it to the top of the ball. I then also added some glue where the screw holes are and finally screwed in some very long screws into this polystyrene ball in the hopes that it was just going to be completely solid and nothing was going to move. And finally it was time to get my disco on and I started to attach some mirrored mosaic tiles to the polystyrene ball to finally make a disco ball. <laughs> And after about an hour, I got this far in and it was taking me way longer than I thought it was going to take. It was taking absolutely ages. And I was also very concerned and very worried that I was going to run out of these mosaic tiles. But I did the rest of it off camera because hours and hours and hours of work went into this. And it honestly, I wouldn't have had space on my memory cards for all the footage. But I got the entire thing covered. I'm very surprised this took such a long time, but I'm still not done because I want to add a chain to this. It's very fragile. Jail. Anyway, I think I'm done. So we have expectation and reality. Look at that. How amazing is this? This took me absolutely ages, but I'm 100% obsessed with it. I don't think mine looks melty. It doesn't look melty at all. It almost looks, I don't know, like a UFO or something. It just looks a bit weird. Theirs looks way more melty than mine, but also I think theirs is a lot smaller. I think I've made a disco ball that is about 10 times the size of theirs. But look at that. Look how fun it is. This took me so long, but I think it's been completely worth it. But how much did this weird disco ball cost us? I have a feeling, again, it cost me a lot of money. Okay, so in total, this cost me £67.98. So this has been a very expensive episode of the Blind Pinterest Challenge. But again, even though it cost me a lot of money, I, I really don't mind. I don't mind it at all. This is your sign to go out and buy yourself a little disco ball and just put it in your room somewhere. It'll, it'll seriously, it'll brighten up your day. You don't even have to piss around making a melty one. Just buy a little one and hang it up on your ceiling. Thank me later. <laughs> anyway, I think that just about does it for today's episode of the Blind Pinterest Challenge challenge. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and let me know whether you'll be attempting any of these crafts yourself. Honestly, I would recommend pretty much all of them, apart from the puzzle piece ball, because I think that's an absolute shite idea. I do think I'm going to have to like head over to the corner of the street and sell my ass to make some extra money to pay for these crafts, but you know, that's fine. <laughs> but anyway, I'll see you next week for a brand new video and I hope I don't spend as much money. Like seriously, my credit card's already maxed out. I bought a new computer. I've spent all this money on crafts and I'm definitely going to have to, you know, get on the corner. And there's a lot of competition too. I'm gonna have to fight people. I'm gonna have to fight them off.